Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody. It's Tom here with episode 830 of Screw the Commute podcast. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about electronic security, especially if you're traveling. This episode kind of plays off my continued attention to satisfy both domestically and travel abroad, your safety. I care about this, and the whole course on it is on BrutalSelfDefense.com. You won't believe some of the things that can happen to you, and you wouldn't even know what happened until it was too late if you don't listen to this episode and kind of get your head around the kind of things that are going on electronically that can screw you over. Okay, hope you didn't miss episode 829. That was Holiday Improvement. I've been doing this for years. It's really helped my personal and professional improvement. And I can hear myself here as I'm a little bit uh, scratchy with a sore throat, but uh, the show must go on. And then I hope you didn't miss episode 828. That was a bunch of phone tips, all the kind of cool things you can do with your phone with the latest updates of operating systems. And, of course, anytime you want to get to a back episode, you go to screwthecommute.com slash the episode number. Phone tips was 828, holiday improvement 829, and today is 830. You'll probably want to pass this on to some of your colleagues, especially if they do a lot of traveling, because it's just, well, wait till you hear the kind of things that are happening to you. All right, check out my mentor program at greatinternetmarketingtraining.com and grab a copy of our automation ebook at screwthecommute.com slash automate free, and you will thank me for it because it's going to save you hundreds of hours into the future from fighting with your computer. And follow me on TikTok at Digital Multimillionaire. Okay, this episode is not so much about fighting attackers physically as a lot of my brutal self-defense is. Of course, awareness is always a part of safety. So I'm a big proponent of that. But it's, this one's about paying attention to your phones, your wallets. And yes, I said wallets, plural, and your other communication devices. Uh, even what you wear on your head and how you wear your hair can be important. So why do I seem to sometimes obsess with safety? Well, I had the unfortunate or, or fortunate experience, depending on how you look at it, of experiencing the dark side of humanity. And I'm not saying I've experienced some of the atrocities of war, as we're presently seeing right now in the world. I'm just saying I've survived over a 100 violent encounters with people who would have been very happy to see me dead? That was when I was in the nightclub business. So I had to be hyper vigilant in that there was little to no police support where I was, and it was pretty much every man for himself. Now, that was a different life ago and certainly a different era where criminals actually went to jail and there, there wasn't the technology that we have today that can be used for you or against you or by you or against you. And that's what I'm honing in on today, especially when traveling internationally. But don't think for a moment you're immune to the types of things I'm going to talk about today if you happen to live in the good old USA. For instance, were you aware there are things called cell site simulators? And that's kind of a, a common and generic name for them are Stingray devices. Stingray is probably actually a trademark of one of the companies that makes them. So these simulators can pretend to be a, a cell tower and your cell phone will log on to it. And, and see, every, every one of you has a thing called an IMSI number. That's a unique uh, international mobile subscriber identifier. Again, sorry for my throat. It's a number and it identifies you by your SIM card and it tells the country, the network you're on, all kinds of things that absolutely identify you, all right? And some of them have advanced features allowing uh, them to intercept communications or even alter communications. <laughs> That's how crazy it is. And some of these devices, these Stingray devices, are passive, meaning they are totally undetectable and they just grab cell phone communications out of the air, kind of like the radio in your car. Right? It just pulls in those FM signals and you hear them. Others are active. They, they broadcast a signal that's stronger than the local cell tower. 
And that causes your phone to connect to them rather than the legitimate cell tower. That means all your communications can be intercepted and recorded. And law enforcement officers have used this information from these simulators to investigate all kinds of crimes and civil offenses. I put a a thing in here, uh, a link just to one article about Baltimore using these secret devices to catch people doing stuff. And I'm all for catching the bad guys, but uh, you do have constitutional rights you have to consider, and we'll get to that in a minute. I mean, they've tracked kidnappers and they investigate robberies, and and the uh, Immigration and Customs Service uses them to arrest undocumented immigrants. Well, this was huh, long before today's atmosphere. And the uh, police have used them at protests. You, you think there wasn't these things running on January 6th? I'll bet you they were. For those of you out of the country, that was when we had that, that thing at the uh, Capitol that they're all blaming on Trump. Now, these simulators or these stingrays are used by the FBI, the DEA, the NSA, the Secret Service, ICE, as well as the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, National Guard, U.S. Marshals, and the FBI. <laughs> all right. Here's the thing. when they, They've been out for a long time. The, the article I sent you was from 2015. They've been out longer than that. In the, around, I think it's 2021, they came up with the Congressional Oversight Commission, came up with a thing saying you had to get a warrant for these. But here's the thing, except in emergency situations. Well, who defines emergency? So it was called the Cell Site Simulator Warrant Act of 2021. You can look it up. So here's the thing, folks. Do you really think that all of those agencies I just rattled off especially in light of all the evidence coming out about them and all their covert activities. Do you think they adhere strictly to the law? <laughs> all right. You know what? If you do, I, I have a, a cell phone tower in the middle of the ocean I want to sell. <laughs> all right. Now, there are some apps like Snoop Snitch to help you locate these kinds of things, but nobody has raved about how accurate they are and how could they be, especially – if you're being surveilled by a passive device, okay? so, you, so you might consider putting your phone and credit cards in a small, what they call Faraday bag to keep people from walking or sitting near you and using skimmers to grab your information. But that has nothing to do with these cell phone simulators. Uh, I mean, the bottom line is that you need to be darn careful what you say on or near your cell phone. Uh, this is not third world stuff, although I'm going to address that now. If you're a U.S. citizen and you travel outside the USA, guess what? Other countries don't have the same constitutional rights we have. And even here, those are getting shredded all the time. But outside the USA, they don't even exist. So here's what frequently happens when you travel somewhere. You're funneled through a checkpoint so that before you even enter the country, you're hit with facial recognition. That's why you might want to wear a hat unless they make you take it off or the way you wear your hair, you know, those kinds of things, just to, you know, not make it as easy on the facial recognition. I wouldn't wear a fake mustache. Right? <laughs> that definitely gets you in trouble. And they do all kinds of electronic signature matching using these kinds of machines to track your electronics. Now, they can actually identify your exact device. They can find the metadata of your calls, like who you're dialing, how long you talked. They can actually intercept the text and voice calls and see your data usage and what websites you visited, just from walking through one little place in an airport. So again, bottom line, so only do the most innocuous stuff on your computer and your cell phone when you're not on your own home secure network. And even then, you got to be careful. Now, there's a thing called a VPN, virtual private network, that can help. Uh, they're cheap. But if, and if you work for a big company, talk to your IT security people to see what you should be doing when corresponding with the home office so that it's secure as possible. All right, now, let's really talk, Turkey. You should have a burner phone. This is one of these prepaid phones you can get at 7-Eleven. And maybe an old, totally wiped clean version of your iPhone or Android that looks modern. And a drop wallet and a drop watch and jewelry. So 
in a lot of these countries, if you have to use public transportation, let's say on a bus or a train, a couple bad guys, this happens all the time, get on and threaten to kill you if you don't put your cell phone, wallet, jewelry, and cash in the bag as they walk down the aisle. So here's what you do. Your real phone should be well hidden on your person and turned off or at least on silent mode without vibration. That way you put the old worthless phone in the bag. A drop wallet is one that has some expired credit cards and maybe an old ID with an old address in it. Maybe 20 or 40 bucks in cash and some costume jewelry and rings. And that should keep the bad guys happy enough so they don't shoot you to make an example out of you. You know, if you resist, they don't care. I mean, they're not going to get caught in, a, in some of these countries. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive treatise of staying electronically safe when traveling, or even in the United States or, or wherever you live. But I want you to start really thinking about the security of your devices and your correspondence, either or business or personal. I mean, if you keep telling... Your kids that, uh, you know, lock the doors because they're home alone and you're in the, some other country, you're just asking for a, a home invasion because those kids aren't going to be able to defend it or, you know, be sex trafficked or whatever, you know. So this is really serious stuff. It's not, it's not any kind of uh, paranoia here. This stuff happens all the time. If you really want to get scared, watch that movie called Taken with Liam Nielsen, right? But of course, you could be just like Hillary Clinton and be talking about yoga classes and wedding planning, right? <laughs> With 30,000 emails or so, and then you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> right? So again, be very careful what you say on or near your cell phone. The walls are listening. Woo. <laughs> all right, folks, I hope this gave you a little bit to think about. You can research all of this stuff by typing in Stingray cell phone simulators and all the kinds of things that uh, you could be doing to protect yourself uh, electronically. All right, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Again, sorry for the rough voice, but uh, the show must go on. Catch you later.